when you add just two or three percent of a green fuel to the fossil fuels that we have today and it has what we're seeing so far is a massive effect on some of the emissions that really? come off these engines piston engines as well as turbine engines does it adversely affect the speed at all you know it took us a while to figure out the tune-up once we got the tune-up and figured out how fast the fuel was going to burn, and of course you can't see the afterburner behind us right now because this covered, car's right. covered up so we can debut it, but if you look on the internet, look up afterburner technology, you can see that, that this flame propagation, the speed at which the fuel burns once you light it, and how fast that flame front moves, that was the secret. That was what we had to find, and it was fairly difficult, and it took a lot of on-track testing to do that. So at Embry-Riddle, we have test cells and we have stationary cells that we can run, run things in. But really, the car, these engines breathe a lot of air. And, they, and so once the car is moving down the racetrack and once it gets breathing, it, it, the engine reacts completely differently. And we've had the advantage of having a number of different jet cars. We've got a, a couple really great drivers. And we've been able to take those drivers that are very consistent in the way they drive the cars and, and gather data and get that information that we needed to ultimately tune the car. Wonderful. So uh, it's my understanding that some of the Embry-Riddle students on the East Coast um, campus are experimenting with biodiesel and we want to be able to share what's going on here with the East Coast. Maybe you can help us out with that. Absolutely. That'd be great. There are some East Coast uh, campus students that are working. They have a biofuel reactor that's on, the, that's on the East Coast that they produce fuel with every single day. That fuel is then taken as, and, we, and we share it. We split it between some of the piston engine diesel vehicles that they're doing testing with and the vehicles at Larson Motorsports. And that actual fuel that the students produce, and it's produced from waste cooking oil is where yes, it comes from. Perfect. And so that actual fuel that the students produce is run in our cars. When we're at shows, sometimes you're in front of 30,000 people or 50,000 people. And um, it's really neat to see their reaction when they take the Smell the French fries? Comes by and I, and I, that's what they always say, isn't it? If it smells like French fries. I don't know if I, I'd eat a box of French fries if it smelled that like that. But you can smell that. You can smell that oil, the cooking oil and the fuel. And um, uh, it's, a, it's an amazing reaction that you get. I think probably, in my mind, from a scientific standpoint and a technology standpoint, we have a little ways to go. Sure. The biggest challenge we have right now is the people around the world and people like us that are so used to pulling up to the gas pump and pumping that pumping dead dinosaurs into your gas tank, right? Yes. I think that we have to change. It's a, I think it's as much of a mental challenge as it is with anything. Sure, so, sure. Yeah. Well, it, it, it sounds to me like a jet dragster is the best test bed for um, renewable fuels. Well, you know, one thing about a jet dragster is we, Elaine has a lot of fans and, and she gets in front of a lot of people all the time. It's a great platform to not only do the actual hands-on testing and find out the characteristics of all these fuels as they develop them, but you're, we're literally going to do this in front of about 1.7 million people a year. So all of those people, average, everyday, blue-collar America or whoever it is that bought a ticket to that racetrack is going to get to see Elaine take this car or one of our other drivers take the car down the racetrack. And, you know, Elaine's going to out-accelerate the space shuttle. She's going to do this one of the fastest. Elaine drives a Corvette to work every day. <laughs> cool. <And laughs> Elaine drives a Corvette to work every day. It'll go 0 to 60 in 4.6 seconds. This car is going to go 0 to 60 in only 7 tenths of a second. So you're going to get to see a crazy girl do a, we think she's got a couple screws loose. But how, yeah. how does it feel to go that fast? You know what? I think it's so surreal because when you hit it, your adrenaline's just flowing so hard. I tell people it's like a river of adrenaline. There is no bigger rush in this entire world. You hit that afterburner, you get slammed back in your seat, and it's go, baby, go. And when you get to the about the, oh, maybe the 660 half track mark, you know, you start saying, okay, let's start thinking about winding this puppy down. As soon as you cross the finish line, the bottles come off, the parachute comes out, and uh, it's go time. It's time to turn around and do it all over again. What would you like to look back upon 50 years from now and, and, and look at the history of what you and Chris have done? What, what would be your best dream come true? You know, we're growing every single day. Um, just a couple weeks ago, we announced 
four girl drivers. Two weren't enough. We had to bring on four, two new girls. You go, girl. You know, um, <laughs> I just want to expand on our industry. Jet racing is such an amazing thing. It's done great things for my family. And I want to show the world what us girls are capable of. And also, you know, it's a great platform for my husband. He loves land speed racing. He loves jets. He loves that. And I like to go fast. So, you know, just a legacy of how cool girls actually can be when we put together and put our minds together. That's wonderful. And what's pretty awesome, too, is some of your drivers actually have degrees in aeronautics, uh, et cetera, and they're, and they're speed racers, too. You know, driving for Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, our brand new driver, this, will be, this is her second season, Marisha Falk, little five foot tall, 98 pound Marisha Falk, gets in these cars and she's bulletproof. Nothing scares her, not, and she's a great, from a skills standpoint, she's a fantastic driver. And I think a lot of that comes from that great training that she's had at Emperor Riddle Aeronautical University. A lot of the training that the, and she's a pilot, she's a pilot, and she actually works at Emperor Riddle now as a flight instructor. But a lot of that training directly crosses into our industry so that the, so that the feel of the cars is, is an awful lot like an airplane. The, the natural power plant uh, is an aircraft power plant. It's all stuff that she was trained on to begin with. Elaine was a great mentor for her. Elaine uh, took her under her wing, showed her all the stuff that she, you know, everything that she needed to know. A great race car driver. And now we have a, a, a third uh, race car driver that will drive for us. Her name is Dawn Purdue. She's actually a nurse, a registered nurse. I read about Dawn. Yeah, and she works with crazy. kids, and she now she goes yes. to <laughs> And then the fourth is Katarina Muller, and Katarina is actually a mechanical engineer. So wow. we have this really nice, well-rounded, and I don't mind it, they're all good-looking girls. I like to, I like to <laughs> hang out with good-looking girls. Smart, right? good-looking girls. <laughs> they are. They're all smart. They're all smarter than I am, so I'm, I have to keep up all the time. But, but I really like uh, what we're doing. It really makes me proud. I'm, I'm, and as a family, did you ever think that we would be where we are today? We, th I will tell you, there is no long range plan. There wasn't a short range plan either. We just got here somehow. We had a lot of luck. We've messed some stuff up and we've had a lot of luck. And with sponsors like Miller Welding, Ember Riddle Aeronautical University, we just signed a brand new one, Matrix Paint Systems. Um, there's a number of them that are fantastic sponsors. Applied racing components, even companies that are definitely green companies that are steering towards green energy, uh, safety clean, uh, and uh, uh, brute force batteries just signed on with us. These are great American companies that are doing great things for this country and helping us rebuild where we need to be. We're going to take these kids and put them right in that action. 